First Baptist Church in Edwardsville $750 a day after it opened its doors to those in need. The pastor is once again facing a possible fine from the city for helping the homeless population. Faith, Love and Hope Church has already been fined $100,000 for using the property as a homeless shelter. I didn't want to disobey the law, but there's a law. God has a moral law that we must all comply to. That is love thy neighbor. First at five tonight, what happens when that love violates a city ordinance? Well, a pastor in Gastonia says that he's helped give homeless people in the city a place to eat and live. But city officials now are punishing his church for code violations. <laughs> A 90-year-old chef and two ministers face criminal charges for feeding hundreds of homeless people in Florida. They're accused of violating a new city ordinance in Fort Lauderdale that prohibits feeding the homeless in public. This is the second time the elderly chef with the big heart has faced off with police in recent days. Wednesday night, police fingerprinted him at the scene and issued a citation. The city ordinance took effect on Friday. The experts have all said, if you are going to simply feed them outdoors to get them from breakfast to lunch to dinner, all you're doing is enabling that cycle of homelessness. They don't receive the aid and the assistance they need to receive. It's our right to feed people. It's a First Amendment right. And uh, I believe in the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, and we should be allowed to feed our fellow man. Chef Arnold Abbott runs a nonprofit group called Love Thy Neighbor. Police also arrested him and ministers Dwayne Sims Sunday as they handed out food to homeless people in a park. Pastor of Dad's Place in Bryan, Ohio, facing charges tonight after opening his church to the homeless. The local zoning commission told the church they could no longer house the homeless because there's no bedrooms and people are not allowed to eat or sleep on the property. Apparently, it's better to do so outside in the cold. The pastor has racked up 18 charges of zoning violations. He says he gets a new charge every day. All right, pastor, to you, your church is not allowed to take in the homeless. The kind of conundrum here because they're saying you don't have beds, but you're not allowed to have beds. So because you don't have beds, you can't have homeless staying in there overnight. It seems unbelievable that they want the people outside in the cold versus inside the church. We made the decision uh, to keep our church doors open 24-7. We had opened um, during... Uh, extreme heat and extreme cold before to allow people in. And it's kind of this idea, we believe that anyone who's weary and burdened, uh, they can come and find rest. And we believe it's true rest, like rest for their souls. And as a church, we believe we're commanded to take those care of those in need. It's not optional. And it's our mission to show Christ's love to even those the world re rejects. He sent his son Jesus to rescue anyone who turns to him in faith. We yep. believe that. And um, in November, the city delivered a letter. They actually posted a sign outside the church um, kind of saying you have 10 days to get the people out and stop this ministry. And um, I just can't do that. I, I, I have to follow Christ. And uh, the people who stay, they stay because they have nowhere else to go. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, no one wants to stay in a church, um, but but they, they have nowhere else to go. We're the church. We won't send them away. And yeah. so unfortunately, the city doesn't agree. And they filed 18 criminal charges against me. And uh, But I'm convinced, Trace, that the church is not just called the teach and preach, but to feed the hungry, welcome the stranger, visit the prisoner, clothe the naked, care for the widow and the orphan. That's what yeah. the Bible says. And, and uh, it, it matters to me because uh, I believe that everything we do, we do for Jesus. That's what yeah. I believe. A pastor in the city of Bryan was arraigned this morning for housing the homeless in his church. Pastor Chris Avell, he pleaded not guilty on 18 counts. Those charges included zoning violations for running a church that sheltered the homeless. The law states residential use in first floor buildings in a business district is banned. The pastor tells WTOL 11 he was just doing his God-given duty. This is what the Word of God teaches, is to take care of the widow and orphan. And we have widows in our church, and we've had um, people who they may not be kids in, under the law, but they're orphans. And uh, this is how I worship my God, and I just want to be able to worship my God. You better even make your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. What are you doing here? I am preaching. You are preaching. I'm going to require you to go away. You can never. Okay, then I will arrest you for a breach of peace. Plain and simple. What? Friend. Breach of peace. It's what you're doing at the moment. You're causing problems, you're disturbing people's days, and you're breaching their peace. Okay, so for me, for that to be dealt with, if you won't go away voluntarily, you will have to arrest I you. will not go away. Because I need to tell them the truth. Because Jesus is the only way. 
the truth. Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life. I appreciate and that. And nobody wants to listen to that. They want you to go away. Oh, you don't want to listen to that. You will listen when you are dead. You will listen when you are dead. You will listen. Take me, take me. No, 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 no. Don't, don't take my five to the grave. Don't take my five to the grave. Police shuttered churches and arrested pastors for defying government health orders. Well, now opponents of a proposed law known as Bill C-367 contend the legislation would deprive Canadians of their right to religious freedom. Proponents of C-367 contended as a response to anti-Semitism, while Christians say essentially those who share biblical views of sexuality or other matters publicly could face arrest for hate crimes. It's a, it's a monstrous step back for religious freedom. It's a dismantling of religious freedom in Canada. Free speech and religious freedom under fire again in Canada. This time it's not pastors getting arrested over COVID-19 restrictions, but a 16-year-old high school student. Josh Alexander shared his thoughts about transgender ideology at St. Joseph's Catholic High School in Renfrew, Ontario. Officials suspended him from class for the rest of the school year, and when he showed up to class for the second semester, he was promptly arrested by two police officers. I was preaching and um, I noticed two uh, people turn up and um, I noticed, um, you know, one of, one of these individuals uh, to me was, was a man who was uh, dressed up uh, in woman's clothes and the other um, just seemed like a friend of uh, this, uh, this, this person. So men and women, you see the Bible says, has to be in the microphone. I've got to hold it. Does God accept the LGBT community? Just a general thing. No, God hates sin. When people ask questions, as they do, I refer to people as a lady or a gentleman. If a man comes up and asks a question, and for one reason I don't manage to get his name, I'll say this gentleman's asked a question. Same with a lady. In this situation, when the question was asked, um, he turned his back on me and, and walked away. So I was there to preach and, and engage with everybody and I referred uh, to this individual as a gentleman. I says, this gentleman has asked this question and I was seeking to um, repeat the question and then seek to deal with that question. This gentleman asked the question. transphobia going on in the, in the heart of the LGBT Excuse me, men and women of Leeds. Everyone. This gentleman asked me a question. He asked the question. He said, does God accept? I am a woman, darling. The friend said, this is a woman. And I responded by saying, no, this is a man. You know, the evidence of my own eyes tell me that, that this person was actually a male, a man who was dressed as a woman and uh, behaving uh, as a woman. You're aware she's a woman? You're aware she's a woman? Can you do that? No, I'm fully aware that this is a man. So that goes back and forth, and then others began to say, she is just as much as a woman as I am, they were saying. And, f and, and for me, as a Christian, uh, my belief is that God made two sexes, male and female. That's my religious belief, that's my scientific belief, that's my philosophical belief. I've always believed that, in fact. What I'm doing today is legal. I have free speech, freedom of expression. Right with God, men and women. The whole time that the police were there, 
they were clearly hearing what I was preaching. You know, there's no abusive language from me, obviously. There's no hate in my tone of voice. Just preaching biblical truth in love. But there are people within this crowd who are stirring up trouble. So the disorder was coming from them and it seemed to me that the police were just focused on me as if I was some bad person there that, you know, you know, saying loads of hateful things when that wasn't the truth of the situation at all. You're using actions and behaviour to cause other people alarm and distress. We've got people coming up making up. I'm not talking to you, so come out of the way. All I had done was speak the truth. And for me, I think, how could it ever be a crime to speak the truth? Because I've been criminalised, I've been charged with uh, a crime for simply expressing the truth that this person in front of me was, in fact, a man and not a woman. Listen, I'm not having that. Okay. I'm not having that. She's told you she's a woman. Okay. I'm not having that. She, she asked, he asked me, okay? He asked me, he asked me, um, what did I think? Right. As I was giving my details, I was also explaining to the officer the situation, you know, what had, what had happened. Immediately, he just changed. It's as if he was getting offended. And he said to me, he said, he said quite sharply, she's already told you she's a woman. And I thought, wow, this is really strange and within I'm thinking this officer seems to have embraced the gender identity ideology himself and I, I was starting to feel a bit confused at that point and, um, and I was just explaining what had happened and then he said that's it and just put the handcuffs on me and arrested me and then uh, took me to the van. The police brought me after arrest and uh, I was in the custody suite here for 14 hours and as we've turned up, you can see the uh, LGBT flag. So one must ask, how can you be treated fairly when they already show their political bias to the LGBT community? Yeah, it's completely unreasonable that I would be arrested, charged, and even prosecuted, you know, for speaking the truth, you know, that this man is a man, uh, while at the same time you have people in the crowd who are threatening, throwing things at me, uh, swearing at me, even stealing my amplifier in front of the police, and the police have done nothing about it. And, um, you know, here I am now, uh, doing community service and, 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 and paying back uh, a large fine for simply preaching and, and speaking the truth and being faithful to, uh, to, to, to God and to what I believe. Over the weekend, a pride event in your town in Watertown, Wisconsin there, where you were there preaching the gospel um, in protest of this event. Take us through what happened. You were arrested during that. Yeah, so we came there, as you said, you know, we're there to pe preach the gospel, have a public witness against the drag queen story hour that was going on, which actually more and more recently over the last like year and a half or so, um, two years, these drag queen story hours are less story hours and more drag queen dance hours. And so that, that's what they were doing. They had, you know, drag queens dancing um, for the kids. And so I turned on my speaker, I uh, was on the public sidewalk, started reading from Galatians 5 which is just a passage about uh, what true love is. And as I was reading uh, from the from Galatians 5, almost the, the moment I turn on my speaker and I start reading from the Bible, all the, a bunch of um, police officers start coming around and without saying anything to me, no warning, nothing like that, an officer just comes up and starts grabbing my arm, twisting my arm to try and um, grab the microphone away from me. And then a few moments later, an officer behind me uh, grabs my other arm and they handcuff me and they take me away. And what, what they ended up charging me with was amplification without a permit and then resisting arrest. Now, the Metropolitan Police has been filmed threatening to arrest yet another Christian preacher over so-called hate crime complaints. Let's take a look now. This unfolded in West London last weekend. 
if you preach in here, it also depends on what you say. You might be committing criminal offences as well. If if you make a members of the public yeah. harassment, alarm, distress, yeah. it's a criminal offence. I'm aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're, we're not we're doing that. What we're doing is about preaching our religion. Okay. Could you just tell me of what you were saying? So, as the Bible says in the book of John, chapter three, verse sixteen, that for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only begotten Son, that whosoever that is any person doesn't matter if they're black, white, homosexual, drunken, liar, thief, prostitute, whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting <laughs> life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world but he sent his son into the world that all can be saved i've had a complaint uh -huh. about some of the comments you've been making uh -huh. which have offended certain people uh -huh. about them being homophobic which is obviously an offense i would i would like i would like you to tell me what homophobic comments i'm supposed right. to have said i will but i'm not going to repeat that right now in the, in the public we're now investigating a crime that's been committed for a crime right yes essentially a breach of the peace with homophobic aggravation we're preaching direct from the scriptures. Right, but see as much as you're Sorry. preaching from the scriptures, people are still offended by that. Surely it's up to you to investigate whether there's a crime has taken place, rather than just taking a, a, a complaint and taking the, the um, remarks that has been made by the person who made the complaint, taking them as gospel truth, surely you should be seeking to see if there's witnesses. Immediately after having his details taken, Angus was arrested. At least five officers appear to have been involved. Just step back, Can I just ask you to step back as well, please, sir? Right. They'll hate you on account of my name, Jesus said. Churches burned in Canada, street preachers arrested for spreading hate speech in England, and people attacked for holding worship services at a park in Portland, Oregon. Christians in the West are now experiencing just a small taste of what their brothers and sisters living in restricted countries have experienced for years. And guess what? It's likely to get worse.